Hi, Daryl Bars, continuing Liquid Lunch in place of Hugh Riley, and I have the pleasure here of having Gabriela Roja, Rodas uh, with me today. Yes, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, and um, you're working with MCIS Languages. Yes. Uh, so, tell us about that. Yeah, so we're um, MCIS Language Solutions. We're a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. uh, providing interpretation, translation, and training services mm -hmm. in multilingual languages. Um, we were founded in 1989, and we were started out in the public sector mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, we were a funded organization, but we slowly, you know, expanded and grown. And now we also have private sector clients, and it's really how we're able to uh, provide a lot of the services. Yeah. Okay. So, what services, for instance, in the mm -hmm. 20 years since uh, <laughs> it first began, yeah. Toronto has completely changed linguistically, yeah. where uh, you know the main man some of the main languages spoken are. You know, Mandarin, Urdu, etc. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, where where does your organization fit in with all this? What are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. yeah. So, we really like to see ourselves as kind of like a broker between, um, for example, what we call the service provider. So, it could be um, a nurse or a doctor, a uh, lawyer, and the non. English speaking person, so mm -hmm. the person who can't access um, the critical services, um, for example, in the city because they don't have uh, the command of the English or French language. Right. So um, that's really what we do, and we first started off with mainly interpretation services. Like court, um, court interpreters at court, for instance? Well, it's or? mostly community interpretation, what okay. we do. Um, well, what we I guess what the core of mm -hmm. the business is is community interpretation. Um, so going on to um, you know provide services interpretation with the, for example, um, Toronto Public Health or um, you know legal aid things. Mm -hmm. that, I guess those kind of settings are what we really specialize in. Mm -hmm. um, and then over the years, because usually what we see is interpretation comes as like the first wave of demand when we see an influx of migrants and immigrants. Mm -hmm. But then it starts to trickle down to translation. So just to differentiate between interpretation and translation, interpretation is really the verbal um, interpretation, and translation is mm -hmm. the, I guess, the interpretation of written documents. So you're doing uh, from one document to another. Right. So we started seeing that demand, and then we slowly started growing that department. And also um, we began training interpreters, so community interpreters, in the 90s, I believe. Right. So. That's really what we do, and mm -hmm. um, the most important thing is that we're very um, focused towards I guess, giving back to the community and our social impact. Mm -hmm. So that's what I believe differentiates us from other uh, language providers. Mm -hmm. So how many people are in this organization translating? So yeah. um, when I started about seven years ago, there mm -hmm. was like maybe 10, like 20 people. Right. Now uh, we're about 60. Oh, wow. So... Um, so is it like a big office building? or what Well, we're actually um, right across the street from the Science Center, which oh, is great. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, no, we, we've expanded to um, about 60 staff. Mm -hmm. um, so we have an awesome interpretation services department mm -hmm. who coordinates all of those requests that come in over the phone, especially. Mm -hmm. A translation uh, services department that handles all the translation requests. Um, my department, the training department, who trains the um, community interpreters and most recently um, translators, which I would love to get into yeah. a little bit later on. Um, and then we have, you know, all the people who make it possible. <laughs> right. um, so HR, everybody else, finance, yeah. And who's funding all this? So uh, we are partially funded by um, several ministries, mm -hmm. um, and we also have some uh, public sector clients and private sector clients. Right. And does um, the pub do any of the public sector clients actually pay, or is it all government? Yes. Yeah, so or yeah. So yeah. That's the I guess the common misconception about uh, nonprofit organizations right. that you know we're either providing free services all the time or mm. that we don't pay our right. our freelancers, the people that we work with. But no, we do. Um, so usually um, we go through the um, proposal process just as other companies do, and then mm. we just provide I guess bid for the services that we want to provide. Okay, and uh, so uh, let's say a full-time tr or part-time, let's say a part-time translator mm -hmm. um, who would work for you. So one thing that is not used is French. French is not well, one French of the Well, French is one of the top languages because it is one of the official languages. So you are working in French Yes, too. yes. Okay. So if you had someone, let's say, who was capable of in English, French, and Spanish, for instance, uh, working part-time for you, what would they do? 
do, for instance, on an average day? Or um, yeah. Well, it depends if they're mm -hmm. working for us as an interpreter. They can mm -hmm. have multiple assignments um, within the day span. Mm -hmm. um, or if they're a translator, um, usually they work from home. Currently, we have two in-house French translators, and this, mm -hmm. I guess, can tell you mm -hmm. a little bit about the volume of French translations that we get. Right. Um, but if you're a freelance translator at home, um, you know, you can be working mm -hmm. whenever you want. But mm -hmm. uh, we do mainly work with uh, freelancers, so um, I guess individual nice. uh, people who are in the city. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are you always looking to for, for new people to, uh, to yeah. work with? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. We have, uh, I guess, an ongoing recruitment process, but mm -hmm. usually the demand for specific languages is driven by, um, for example, the client's need, or if we see an influx of, mm -hmm. you know, a cultural group immigrating. Right. Uh, for example, the, um, I guess, the Syrian refugees that we had as an example. Mm -hmm. So we had to really amp up the recruitment uh, of, uh, I guess, Arabic uh, interpreters and translators. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And you said you were involved in the training. Especially. Yes, so yes, yes. So I really want to talk about talk that because it's, okay. it's um, I guess, a passion project for myself. Well, mm -hmm. I'll give you a little bit of background, but sure. um, when I first started off at MCIS, I was um, with the translation department. Mm -hmm. um, so this is about seven years ago or so. Right. And uh, we also, at that time, we were training community interpreters, but not translators. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we started receiving requests. Why aren't you training translators? What's going on? Um, and we also started seeing a trend of not being able to fulfill certain uh, requests um, by our clients. For, Such as? Um, for certain languages. For example, uh, Herero. That's one language. Um, Which that, is Herero is spoken by? Sorry. Um, I can't recall now, but it just okay. sticks out in my yeah, mind because okay. it was a particularly right. difficult yeah. project to fulfill, okay. right? Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, we started seeing that we had to um, either decline or really figure out who was going to carry mm -hmm. out the translation services right. because there we saw a shortage of uh, people who were trained as translators, mm -hmm. or we saw people who had the skills um, or the bilingual skills to become translators, but no means to train as translators. And the reason for this is that, um, so we did a bit of research and we came across that there's no translator training programs in Ontario um, if you want to work in languages outside of um, Spanish, French, and English. Right. Um, so this uh, definitely becomes a problem because mm -hmm. the we're serving like a multicultural and very diverse city and mm -hmm. many of these languages wouldn't be able to be represented if there was right. no translators right. and a lot of people going without access to critical information and critical services mm -hmm. so that became mm -hmm. a big problem right um, so how have you dealt yeah, with that problem? So yeah. <laughs> unfortunately like back then we didn't have the capacity. As I mentioned, we were a super small organization right. mm -hmm. and nor the funding. Um, so what our excellent, I guess, management team did was set out to look for particular grants that would mm -hmm. support um, that vision of bringing about a translator training program. Right. And I believe it was in 2016, uh, we received the wonderful news from the Ontario Trillium Foundation that uh, MCIS had been awarded a grant. Nice. So this was, I, I guess, four or five years of even thinking that this wasn't even possible. Mm -hmm. So for me, the only way that I can describe it is a, as a complete, I guess, dream come true mm -hmm. um, to be working on this project. Um, so the translator training program, it has a dual purpose. Um, not only um, does it allow non-English speakers in what I like to call the non-official languages, mm -hmm. Um, have access to translated material in their language and um, for example the top languages in the city um, are Punjabi, Tamil, Arabic, um, Chinese, Mandarin, Urdu. exactly. Yeah. Um, so we were gonna by training these uh, people then we would be giving them access to this material um, right. and also it would allow those who we're not able to access training and therefore not able to, perhaps if they wanted to start their own business as a freelance translator, give them that opportunity to okay. be trained and to do that. Nice. Yeah. 
So, and you, you're doing that hands-on, that's what you're doing right now? Yes, so that's, I'm doing that. I live, eat, sleep, breathe, everything, translator training. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so... So um, how many people are you working with right now in training? Um, so in my department, um, I think we're about six of us, and particularly on the translator training program, we've had about four, four or five staff members, contractors, mm -hmm. and then a huge team of subcontractors that have been helping us develop the program. Okay, so you're yeah. actually developing the whole program on how to do this? Yes, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah so um, we actually launched the on-site program mm -hmm. um, in March of 2017. Right. So it took us about a year to really put together all the content, do mm -hmm. some research, put it all together, have it evaluated by um, some you know, stakeholders in the field, such as mm -hmm. you know, university professors uh, teaching translation. Um, and then most recently in May of this past year, we launched the online version. Mm -hmm. And it seems a lot more, uh, I guess, a lot simpler than it's, <laughs> well, but it was really a very daunting task. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um, so we developed over, well, about 40 modules that are, right. so about, I, go, I would say 40 units, and each unit is about three hours of instructional um, mm -hmm. class time. So it's about 120 hours training. So everyone who's working for you needs to go through the 120 hours well, of training? Well, it's, um, it's not really who, who's working for us, but any, um, you know, people who are aspiring to be um, community translators, what mm -hmm. we like to call them. And is this free for those people yes, to do? Yes, so absolutely. Thank you okay. for reminding <laughs> me. Yeah, because it is funded uh, mm -hmm. by the Ontario Trillium Foundation, it is free for um, 500 people. And um, right now we've trained about one... 150 to 180 and we have another 150 in training Wait, okay. so we have around 300 out of the 500 oh, so people yeah. better get in there quick <laughs> yeah i mean they're, if, if they're interested because yeah. who knows if funding will continue with the new government well <laughs> scary thing yeah for sure yeah. we have the funding until uh, march 2019 mm -hmm. um, 2019 yes 2019 so, so the end not just this year but the next year as well yeah 2019 okay, march 2019 good. Um, and then that's after that, we have to, um, I guess, start charging mm -hmm. for the program. <laughs> right. Yeah. So people just have to look, uh, get in touch with mcislanguages.com? Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. They can go on okay. our website, mcislanguages.com. Mm -hmm. um, there's a training tab at the top, mm -hmm. um, translator training. They can register for that, and it's absolutely free. Yeah. And what are the benefits for people to do this? Well, one of the benefits, um, I would say, is definitely um, learning more about best practices in the field. We have a lot of students who have some experience in translation mm -hmm. or had um, translation experience from back home, mm -hmm. for example. Um, but, you know, maybe they're just missing, um, you know, formal training or uh, experience in the Canadian context. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what this program provides for them. Then there's those who have no background in translation whatsoever, mm -hmm. but have that bilingual or trilingual, uh, or whatever. exactly skill. So uh -huh. they're able to harness that and mm -hmm. then start learning about translation. So it right. really caters to, I guess, a wide variety of students because mm -hmm. we also go into you know how to uh, manage and build your own translation business, which wow. um, is another exactly which a lot of people find very relevant. Yeah. Right. For for language entrepreneurs. Yeah, yes. exactly. Okay. Well, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that the, the, the casual, bilingual, trilingual, quadrilingual speaker in Toronto should think about doing. Yeah, perhaps. should definitely think about it. Especially 200, 200 spaces left. Well, yeah, yeah, especially if you know, one of the prerequisites is that they have to at least, um, you know, know how to type in their language, which is a lot uh, trickier than it seems. Right. You but, need, you um, yes, because translation is written. Um, long gone are the days of writing out translations. Right. So everything is But you is said there's also now. oral translators, too. You know, um, so there's interp interpretation, right. yeah. So interpreters okay. do can right. do the oral. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've, I've so much <laughs> mind for this. Not myself, but, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. that, that's an interesting thing. Yeah. Okay. And what? Um, where would you like to see this go? Like, how big or... Um, What's your dream for this yeah, organization? Yeah, so what I'm working on right now um, mm -hmm. with um, my, uh, I guess, I'm my boss, <laughs> the director of client services, is trying right. to get more recognition for the program, mm -hmm. um, which 
We have in some part gained some recognition from, um, for example, the Ontario Council for Community Interpreting, mm -hmm. um, and then the University of Strasbourg. We have some partnerships so that our students can, you know, access their programs, oh. or mm -hmm. um, so that the program can be recognized as professional development units, nice. which is very important. Right. Um, so the next step is really trying to get more recognition for the program, um, which is uh, some of the feedback we've received from students, like, what can I do? Um, but um, once you receive the training, um, you do get a certificate, a certificate of completion, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, you're able to work with MCIS as a translator. And what's important to really, I guess, highlight is that um, you can work as um, a freelance translator without getting... Um, like certified, mm -hmm. which is what a lot of people are looking for, but that process is very uh, complex and it's very long and it's uh, only granted by um, ATIO, so the, the Association of Translators and Interpreters of Ontario. Mm -hmm. However, the program, because it does encompass all of these topics, I believe is a very good uh, course to take if you want to prepare to be certified right. um, because it does cover a lot of best practices and mm -hmm. ethical dilemmas that... Um, you know, are really relevant for translators. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. And when you got involved in this, what was your background when you first entered? Um, so, <laughs> when I first started the project, um, my forte is, I guess, project management. Mm -hmm. um, so, my responsibility was to really um, make sure that we developed developed the program and developed it on time and within budget mm -hmm. um, so that was I think my greatest <laughs> contribution to it mm -hmm. um, but I've also um, developed a lot of the um, the modules especially mm -hmm. on translation project management right. um, I've also been involved in facilitating um, some of the classes on site mm -hmm. I lead a couple of webinars online as well um, mm -hmm. And you know, constantly improving the content, mm -hmm. etc. And are you always working in English with the translators, oh. or are you dealing with different languages yourself? Yeah. So um, personally, I only translate from Spanish into English. Mm -hmm. um, that's my training. Mm -hmm. uh, I completed a degree at, at Glendon, so that's right. York University translation certificate and translation masters. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a tough course, that one. <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. Right. yeah it, it took me a very, very long time to finish my thesis, yeah. but I'm really glad that I yeah. did that. And that course has a reputation. It's been a little bit hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the program itself um, is language independent mm -hmm. or language neutral. Right. Um, so we're taking that idea, the methodology from our community interpreter training, which actually the language of instruction is all in English for both programs. Mm -hmm. um, and really what it's teaching them is the skills, the strategies, um, the research tools, the sources of how they can carry out um, translation into their language. Okay. And yeah. so anyone working for you would have to first go through the 120 hour training? Before um, they could start freelancing? So or if you're or working uh, as a freelancer for us, you don't have to undergo the training oh, if you already have previous training. But if you don't? But if you don't um, and you really want to work with us as a translator or any other organization, mm -hmm. then yes, definitely I would recommend taking the translator training mm -hmm. program. But are you, are you ever looking for people to do it, uh, sort of taking the program as they're also doing the work for you? Does that happen too? Or so... Uh, because we do have um, industry standards that we have to follow when mm -hmm. carrying out translation right. uh, services, the translators that we work with have to have a minimum um, number of years of experience or have a university degree or be certified, etc., mm -hmm. which I guess is um, part of, I guess, the way that uh, the industry is set up, mm -hmm. right? So it's a little bit difficult if you don't have training, then how can you get the experience? Mm -hmm. But if you... so. It's quite, a, I guess, chicken and the egg kind of situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's why this program is so important because you can get that experience with the program. So there's a lot of hands-on practical work mm -hmm. um, to get you translating. You do receive feedback from professional translators at the end of the program. So you do get that mm -hmm. feedback from someone in order to improve. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds good. Um, what other things can you let our listeners know about with this program? <laughs> I mean, we've covered quite a bit, but um, there must be other hidden gems there that we don't know no. about. Because I, I had not heard of this program. Oh, really? No. <laughs> well, now you do. Now I have. <laughs> yeah. And I know that, you know, I was just reading in the paper about how many people in Toronto, the percentage who do not speak English or yeah. French and need this kind of help. And mm -hmm. it's pretty significant, obviously. Yeah. So are there other competitive groups with you or...? 
So versus, as far as I yeah. know, um, we are the first mm -hmm. um, to have a translator training program that's mm -hmm. focused on community translation. Right. Um, and as of right now, I guess we're just trying to also raise awareness of exactly what you just uh, mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. That there is a large number uh, of people in the city that need access to mm -hmm. these services and they can't get it unless mm -hmm. it's in their language. Right. So we're trying to raise awareness of that and we'll continue to raise awareness of that. Mm -hmm. And this program is definitely part of that strategy. Right. Um, one thing that I do have to say about the program, um, going into it, I expected to be, um, I guess with the rest of the team kind of sharing and imparting the knowledge that we had. Right. But it was a very wonderful, um, I guess, surprise um, of, about all the things that we've learned from our students right. and their experiences because mm -hmm. many of them, as I mentioned, do have some past translation experience right. or they have experience as, as interpreters. So it's a really great opportunity to learn from them mm -hmm. to constantly improve or update our program as well. That's great. Um, and we're also very, very, very fortunate to have a wonderful team of facilitators mm -hmm. um, who are also professional translators or who have um, you know, degrees in translation um, and who also are certified and they are also committed to sharing in that knowledge and they, um, they believe in our vision of you know, the need uh, mm -hmm. to provide people with access to critical information and services through translation. Right. Yeah. That's great. So I think you probably covered everything, <laughs> yeah. I think. So. And the last thing people can do is just go to, yes, this, uh, yes, absolutely. Go to the website. Yes, yes, absolutely. They can go to mcislanguages.com. Mm -hmm. um, then there's the training tab and definitely sign up mm -hmm. um, before the end of uh, March 2019 That's so right. that they can get a free spot. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay. And how about just on the flip side, the clients, the people looking for that, how, how did they have to get in touch with you or are they getting through different organizations? Yeah, so um, if there are any clients that yeah. need translation, interpretation, or mm -hmm. training services, they can definitely contact us. Again, mm -hmm. mcislanguages.com. Mm -hmm. um, they can request a quote for any services and then we'll respond mm -hmm. um, within 24 hours. Okay. And you guys are very busy. Yes. <laughs> but we always respond within 24 hours. Okay. It's one of our That's biggest... Good. That's the motto. Uh, yes. We respond in 24 hours or <laughs> yes. our service is free. Okay. No, you didn't say that. Okay. Um, yeah. Great. And you're located just across from the Science Center, yes. as you said. Yes. So, so, yeah, we're at Don Mills in Eglinton, mm -hmm. um, right in the middle, smack dab in the middle of construction, but oh, we're there. You're there. Uh, yeah. Everyone's suffering with this Eglinton. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's great. Yeah. So there it is, people. <laughs> we know about it now. Thank yeah. you very much, Gabriella, well, for coming in. Thank you so much in. for having me. That's great. So yeah. I hope the organization keeps its funding. Yes. Maybe the federal government can step in. <laughs> well, that would be fingers good. crossed. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of tax dollars out there to access, <laughs> so let's hope so. Yeah. Sounds like a useful thing, and definitely in this city we, yeah. we, we need this. Yes, so this is do. great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.